Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we are diving into stop motion animation. We've had a les lesson in class on the way we're going to design our project. We've also learned the different techniques and methods over time that have been used to create stop motion animation. It's a great technique to create a little motion in your designs to get your customers excited about what you're working on. So for this tutorial, I've selected to use an image that I've sourced from the internet. Some of you are going to paint your images. Some of you are going to design, use some photography, use some camera, use some still frames. You might even use clay. But for this, I'm going to use a stock photo. So first, I'm going to make sure I open Photoshop. I open my file. I'm going to go where I have it stored, which is on my hard drive. You guys will have yours in the same place. Look at my drive. I'm going to go to where I store all my file. And you'll see I've created a folder, Stop Motion. Now, I have a file that I found that I can use for this exercise. Now, the most important part to begin this properly is to realize that we need to fill an aspect ratio, which is the size of our movie screen. So we need to know that. <clears throat> We're going to have to select our canvas. We're going to have to click into image size. We're going to have to look at the parameters of our file. We need to have a 16 by 9 inch file. We need 16 inches wide by 9 inches tall. That is the aspect ratio for this project. Now, we want high res files. This is a download from the internet, so it's not going to be any higher than 72 dpi. As long as we feel that this is a crisp, clean, and the best clarity that we can get, that will be fine. The rest of you, I want to see this. 300 ppi. All good quality artwork. So I'm going to convert this. Even though it's not going to make a big change, I still want to work from a high-res file. Click OK. You'll see how big the file gets. Now, we didn't change the clarity. We didn't change how well it looks. We just made it high res. We, as we know, we spoke about this in class. This is, this is kind of cheating. But I want you to all get in the habit of working in high res files. If you're painting, start high res. If you're photographing, start high res. I cannot say it anymore. Now, let's just say that our picture off of the internet was not the appropriate size. We need to change that. We are going to go to canvas size. As you see now, this tells you how you want to extend or decrease the size of your canvas. You can tell that it's already shrunk down to 10 inches. We're going to make it 16. We are not going to change the height. All we're going to do is tell the computer where our image lies. I want to keep this centered. Click OK. And now you can see my canvas comes back to full size. Image, canvas size, 16 inches, centered, OK. So. Moving on. We have an image on a background. You can see this area is white now because we changed the canvas. You can see that I can grab the hand tool. I can move it so it's centered. We have the original background. We want to remove all this. We've had some lessons on this in class. This is going to be a quick lesson in image masking. We've talked about quick mask. We've talked about how to use it. We know if we draw a marquee anywhere on our file and hit Q, we create a mask. We can place that mask over our object and continue to increase and fill the missing shape. We can use the brush tool. You're going to want to open this palette. Make sure you have a crisp brush. There is no fuzz on the edge of this shape. Scale is quite large. That's pretty good, about 100, 
I'm going to come back. And you can see now, I am painting in the rest of the shape. This is the best way to get a proper mask. I am going to do a quick run through because I don't want to bore you guys. I'm going to run through the shape. I'm going to turn off my layer. We're going to look at our channels and we're going to notice that this shape has quite a lot of areas that need to be filled. We can increase our brush. Click off the canvas. Now we have a nice big brush. We know we can go in and fill that. We don't always have to look at the image if we're just doing a black and white mask correction. Then we can turn over on our channels. We can turn them back on and we can see. This is one way. Q releases. Command J pastes it on its own individual layer. Now that is not a very clever mask, but for all intents and purposes, it is showing you one way to get the fish from the ground. You're going to do it better. You're going to tweak it. You're going to go into, I'll zoom in, all these little areas and get it clean. Now, we also at one point this year talked about a tool from the internet that removes backgrounds. It is a little clunky. Now in Photoshop, we have a better tool. We have what's called select color range. Now color range has an eyedropper. I set my fuzziness to zero because I don't want anything selected when I start. I click on the white shape. It is basically a modified quick mask, but it selects by color. Now, I have both white sides selected. It sex selects everything in that color. Now, if I click the black, you'll see it also will select one color at a time and get pretty close to that edge. If you want to add to that selection, use the plus sign. Come back, select the white. Now we have the white and the black and none of the fish. This is where it gets tough. I'm going to zoom in because we want to click in these black areas and get closer to the shape carefully because you will start to see that objects inside your shape get selected. I try to get as perfect as I can because you already see it's coming into the shape. If you're happy with that, click OK. You want to view full screen. Realize your quick mask is the negative because we're trying to get rid of the simple colors, which were in the background in this case. We need to go in, out. We're going to go under the select menu and we are going to modify our selection. We are going to invert our selection. So actually we're going to go select inverse. Hit Q again. There's your fish. Much cleaner. Much, much cleaner. Let's turn off our object and see our quick mask. Hmm. There are some holes. Let's get our paintbrush. Nice big paintbrush and clean that up. Again, I am doing this fast. I am doing this in order to show you this is not the way I want you to do it. I want you to go in. I want you to tweak all these little areas. I don't want you missing any of the fin or on your shape. It could be a person's leg or an arm. I want you to do a better job than this. This is for exercise purposes. Back to seeing our RGB. Release quick mass, command J. Remove or throw away our background. Zoom out and now you see you have a floating fish. You need to have this transparency in order to create a stop motion video. You want your fish to animate without any background. You might ask this question, Mr. Anderson, why are we in RGB mode? Well, let me tell you, 
It's because we're creating a video. If we were printing this, we would be working in CMYK. But because we are working on a video, we are going to stay in RGB color mode. We are just going to make sure we maintain a high res file. Now that is step number one. We now have an image that we can use to animate throughout our movie. But in order to do that, we have to create the still frames that create the stopping point and the starting point and the ending point. So, if this is our aspect ratio, if this is the size of our screen, our fish is a little large. Now you remember, we want to transform our objects using the transform tool, which is under the edit menu, transform. Scale, rotate, distort, skew, perspective. Or the simple command T. Photoshop holds your proportions so you don't have to hold shift. Shrink your object to a desired scale and create what you would consider the beginning or start frame of your stop motion exercise. I am going to have my object move or my fish from left to right, or I'm sorry, from right to left. It's actually going to come across the screen. Deselect, there you go. Now, if you were to move this off the page and select it, and well, you'll see it, command all, and then move, you just cut it in half and lost your shape. Let's not do that. Command undo, command undo. Command undo, I want my fish back. Drag your layer to the plus symbol. Make a backup. Turn it off. That way you're guaranteed. Now, based on this lesson, we spoke about needing approximately 15 to 25 frames to create a 30 second movie. Now, those frames might have to repeat in unison three to five to 10 times in order to fill that time frame. One frame is a split second. A one second is a long time to stare at a single frame. So you will maybe get three seconds out of your 25 images if you're gonna create a smooth transition. Pick a starting point. I want my fish basically off the canvas to start. Now, my first frame, I'm gonna see just his nose and eye. What I need to do at this stage is create a bank of files. And we're gonna label them in order, one through our final number. So I'm going to use the file Say, well, well, let's do it this way. We're going to do the export as PNG. So we're going to use the export function. We're going to format the file as a PNG. We are going to make sure it stays transparent. We are not going to change the image size. It shows in pixels. It's fine. The scale is going to remain 100%. All of the other information is fine. Just remember transparency export it's going to ask you a name i am going to save it to my desktop in order just to show you i could create a new folder and i could call it stop motion sequence which will reside on my desktop the key is naming your file .png must remain. Do not change the file extension. We are going to call this fish1. And save. There you go. It is now saved because you saved as, as an export into your data bank. Come back. Move your fish again. Equal increments. Up and down. 
file save as you're going to find that folder on your desktop the stop motion sequence you're going to click on the last name which is <laughs> i spelled it wrong fitch one we realize we did save as guess what you can't do the png from here hit cancel file export export as png transparent export click on your fitch one change it to two there you go you're going to do this for save as three save as four save as five save as six save as seven save as eight now you can see i'm moving it down but now i'm going to do eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 off the page. You're going to save in sequence this many files. And I will show you what this looks like. My original beta one png now watch as i click down 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 look at my files moving now mine are moving back and forth because i had mine doing a little bit of a dance 17 frames i'll go backwards you can see him now walking backwards frame by frame that is what you were going to use to prepare your stop motion images for use in iPhoto, sorry, iMovie. Thank you guys, have fun, good luck, and I'll see you in our next video as we go into iMovie.